to the Brother Henry and You Show. I was so glad that you tuned in today. You know, I'm excited. You know why? Because the Bible tells us that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, we have nothing to complain about, friends. We really don't. When you look around the world and you see poverty and you see all these things that's going on in the world, you know what? We have a right to praise God. We have a right to bless His name. David says, Never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Can I pray for you before we get this telecast started? Lord, I thank you today for your blood. Thank you for your power. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that's in this place. I pray, Lord, that the word I will share today will bring comfort to the listeners. Let not one person lead that stream the same way that they came. May your love become tangible, Lord, to them. May your love become real to them, Heavenly Father. And God, we just pray that your glory will be manifested in their lives in a powerful way. May they acknowledge you, Lord, in everything that they do. And while they wait, Lord, and cherish their waiting hearts, that you're working behind the scenes. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to ask you a question. Does anyone like waiting? Uh, I don't know about that. I know I don't. You know, a few days ago, my daughter... I was sitting on the couch, and um, she came to me and she said, Daddy, I want a popsicle. And I said, well, day day, you have to wait a second. I'll, but I want it now. Y'all that got four or five-year-olds, you understand. She said, but, but I want it now. I don't like waiting. I said, day day, that's tough. And she said, you're mean, Daddy. You know, just a father and daughter. Dad. The whole thing about it is, she did not want to wait. And to be honest, none of us like waiting. But there is a reward in waiting. You know, many times in our lives, we have prayed and we have petitioned God for things. And many times uh, when we do that, it seems like that everything is on delay. It seems like we're going in circles. It seems like nothing is happening. It seems like we're not seeing the manifestations of anything. You have prayed. You've done everything. And it still seems like you're not getting the results you like to see. Now, you need to understand this, that you need to be patient. Because God knows what he's doing. And what God does is right. And not only that, God knows what's best for you. Let's face it, who likes waiting? I know I don't, but waiting is a part of life. You go to the licensed bureau place, what, what, what do you got to do? Take a ticket, sit down, and what? And wait. You go get groceries, a Walmart, Kroger's, wherever you go. You just can't cut in front of people. What are you doing? <laughs> you got to stand there and wait. You go to the doctor's office and you check in. They're going to tell you to go sit down and wait for the, the, uh, the doctor to call you. You have to wait. Nobody likes doing that. You know, just here recently, I went and got blood work done and everything came back great. But I hadn't been to the doctor in a while. So during my appointment, my doctor told me, like, he said, we're going to run some blood work on you. And he said, you will get your results in a few days. And I was like, <laughs> I said, no, no. I, this is what I said in my mind. I didn't say it out loud. I was just thinking out loud. I said, I want the results right now. I don't want to wait. I want to see if there's anything wrong with me. But you know what? When I got the results, I was pleased. I was rewarded for what? Waiting. My whole point is, Waiting comes a part of life. You ladies out there who get impregnated, you got to what? Wait nine months till your baby gets here. 
which that's a beautiful result, by the way. You have to wait. You have to be patient. You have to trust that God knows what he's doing. God knows what's best for you. Uh, let's read Psalm chapter 27, verse 14. I am so excited about today's program. Um, Psalm 27, verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait on the Lord. David says, wait on the Lord. Be strong in your heart. Wait. That's why I asked you this question. Does anyone like waiting? I'll be honest. I do. I do. Now, I know a lot of folks say, well, patience is the fruit of the Spirit. I struggle, folks, with waiting. Patience with me, oh, no. I, I, I struggle with that. And if many of us were to be honest today, we all don't like waiting. We all don't like waiting on the results. But the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. He says they shall mount up wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You will never be weary. You will never faint if you wait. Don't be weary today. Be strong, as David says, in your heart. And know that God knows what he's doing. Nobody likes waiting. But if you wait, God will come through for you today. There is always a reward in waiting, even in the quiet moments, even when it feels like that God <clears throat> is not there. Have we ever had those moments or am I the only one? That we pray, we petition God for things, we fast that we've done everything that we can do and it just seems like that God is like somewhere off in space somewhere. It seems like he's nowhere around. It seems like that he's excluded himself but how many know that there is no separation between you and the Father? How many know that you are in perfect union with him? And even when you feel like he's separated, even when you feel like he's not listening, he's there all the time. You know, not only do we feel this way, but David felt this way in Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. David says, Oh God, do not remain silent. He says, Do not turn a deaf ear and do not stand aloof. That means afar off, oh God. So there have been times, even in my walk, where I felt like, God, you're standing afar off. It seems like you're silent. It seems like you're turning a deaf ear to me. But the truth is, he's right there. The truth is, he has not turned a deaf ear. He's listening to me. The truth is that while I think that he's silent, God is there all the time. It takes faith to believe this, that when you don't see the results right away, when you don't see the manifestations unfolding in your life right away, you have to have faith and believe that God is working on your behalf. You may be facing a dead end right now. It may be financial, it may be spiritually, it may be emotionally. But if you wait and keep moving in faith, God will come through for you. Speaking of faith, Let's turn to Mark chapter 11, a very familiar passage. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24. Now Jesus thought out with these powerful words. He says, have faith in God. Jesus answered, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself in the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believe that what they say will happen. It will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received and you will have. There are three things that we're required to do. Number one, you have to have faith. The God kind of faith. That Christ faith that's operating through you. It's a fruit. Number two, you can't doubt. Now the enemy will come to you and say, God is not listening. You know, God doesn't care. You know, God got better things to do. The enemy will come to you and he'll try to sow 
seeds of discouragement in your heart, but you have to be strong in your heart. As we just read, you have to be strong. You have to know that God knows what he's doing. Don't allow the enemy to sow seeds of guilt and discouragement in your heart because doubt can sometimes be the barrier with us not receiving the things that we need from the Lord. Doubt can sometimes stop that. Number three, believe. Have faith, don't doubt, believe. Lord, I believe. I don't see the manifestations. I don't see the results. I don't like waiting. <laughs> but God, I believe. I believe you know what you're doing. You know what my grandma used to tell me? She says, Henry, when you take something to the altar, you leave it there. But here's the problem. Many times we leave it there and we pick it right back up and we take it out of the door. What am I trying to say? Whatever it is that you're petitioning God for, whatever it is that you're praying for, leave it at the altar, leave it at your place of prayer, leave it there. Let God handle it, no matter what it is. Let him take care of it because he knows what he's doing and he, what he does, he does best. Now, when you're truly operating, when you're truly operating in now faith, you will believe God above your circumstances. When you're truly operating in what we call now faith, your faith will become so real in God that it will surpass your circumstances. Your circumstances will no longer matter because you know God is going to take care of that. Faith declares that I have already received even though, listen to this, even though I have not seen the results yet. That's what faith declares. It takes faith to do that. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Sometimes we want to see our miracle. We want to see our blessing. We want to see our financial breakthrough. Many times you have to tap into another world. And what I mean by that is the world of faith. Because faith sees the invisible, believes the impossible. Faith says, you know, I believe that I'm already prosperous. Faith says, I'm already blessed. Faith says, God is going to pull through for me. Now, I asked myself this question. I said, why am I not seeing the results that I would like to see in my life? Why, why am I not seeing these things um, unfold in my life. It could be three reasons, but not limited to these. Number one, is it in alignment with God's will? Many things we pray for, let's just be honest, we really don't need. Oh God, bless me with a husband, bless me with a wife. But you are emotionally unstable. You don't even know how to handle yourself. You are an emotional wreck. You don't even know how to handle yourself, and you're praying, oh, God, bless with a husband and a wife. He's not going to do that. you got to get yourself together, and the Holy Spirit will help you with that. But you got to get yourself together if you're talking about getting married or jumping into a relationship. That's not going to be in alignment with God. Now, is it a beautiful thing that you want to get married? And I'm just using that for an example. You know, uh, it's great that you want to do that, but if, but if God sees that you're not ready, that's not going to be in alignment with his will. Oh, God, bless me with a new car. And you can't even afford your rent. That's not going to be in alignment with his will. Why would, he, why would God bless you with a new car and you're always late on your rent? You have to be a good steward of your money first. Number two, will it build me or will it break me? Sometimes things don't happen because God sees down the road. He sees the end result. He sees that what you're praying for, what you're desiring, is not going to build you in the long run. It's going to eventually break you. And sometimes, and I thank God for this, sometimes I believe in my heart that sometimes some prayers may not be answered because God sees that it's going to hurt you down the road. Number three, 
Maybe it's something that God sees that you cannot handle at this current time. Maybe some of you are praying for that God just seems like right now you just, just simply not ready for it. It's, you're not ready to handle it right now. You have to understand that God sees the bigger picture. He sees the end result. All the things that make you ask why or question will one day be clear in the light of God's love. You will see that the very things you are worried about, God is setting things in place in your life right now. Every detail, and only you and God knows that. Now, the most important question is, what do I do while I wait? I'm going to tell you four things you should do while you wait. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms chapter 37. We're going to read verse 3 through 5 and verse 7. Now, this is what you do while you wait. Psalms 37 verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. Now, what did that first word say? We'll put it on the string right there. Trust. What does trust mean? Trust in the Lord means more than believing in who he is and what he does. This word actually means to have confidence in. Having confidence in something means having assurance that whatever you have confidence in will lead or take action. You know, I'll give this illustration. You know, I was at church one time, and I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, come up here. And I was talking about trust. I said, now, I'm going to fall back. But I got confidence in you that when I fall back, I'm not going to fall on the floor and hurt myself. You're going to catch me. Why? Because I trust you. I have confidence in you. I believe you can do it. I believe you can take action. I also gave the illustration that I said, church, when you walked in today, you didn't see, you didn't get on your knees and say, oh, let me check the legs under this table or these benches to make sure it's going to hold me up. You didn't do that. Why? Because you trust that when you sat down on your blessed assurance that everything was going to be okay, that that chair or that bench was going to hold you up. My friend, I want you to know the same principle applies to our life spiritually, that when you fall, God says, I'm going to hold you up. When it looks like your life is becoming rocky and unsteady, God says, I'm going to provide stability in your life. You will never fall when you're in the hands of God. You can never fall from a secure place. And that secure place is trust. Lord, I trust you. I don't know how this is going to work out. It seems impossible. I've tried everything. But God, I trust you. That's what trust is. The second one that we find in Psalms 37 verse 4. It says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So number two, you delight. Number one, you trust. Number two, you delight. Delight just simply means that we invite the Lord to examine our desires and intentions. But not only that, but to change whatever that does not fit for his purpose for my life. That's what it means. We invite him to examine our desires and our intentions. But not only that, Lord, change whatever that does not fit into my life for your will and for your purpose. He'll do that today if you believe him. He'll do that today if you delight in him. All you have to do is just delight in him. Lord, I delight in you. Lord, I believe you're going to work it out. The Bible says that all things work together for the good. To those who love God and what? To those who are called according to his purpose. Now, you love God, right? Yes. 
and you will call according to his purpose. Well, my friend, it's going to work out for you. Stop stressing. Stop worrying about it. Put it in God's hand. Nobody likes waiting. I don't like waiting. But just trust. Delight. Now, what, what's number three? Let's read Psalm chapter 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will what? Do this. Now, when I say do this, you know what that means. I don't know what you've been praying about. I don't know your current status. I don't know what you're going through right now. But if you would commit your way to the Lord and trust in him, he will do this. And he will do this for you. That word commit just simply means to entrust. It means that everything that we do in life has been totally committed to God. So you trust, you delight, you commit. Now, what? lastly, what do we do next? We rest. My pastor says it best. He says, rest is trust. Rest looks like trust. We need to rest to recharge in order to be effective. Psalms 37 Verse 7 says, Be still and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their own wicked schemes. Other version says, Rest. I like it both. Be still. Rest. Rest looks like trust. When you're laying down sleeping at night, you don't got one eye open like, What's going on? No, why? Because I'm resting. Everything's going to be okay. We need to rest in the fact that whatever you're praying for, whatever you're petitioning God for, you need to rest in this truth that I'm about to give you right now. You can take this in the bank. Rest in this truth. God has already provided everything I will ever need. Every spiritual blessing that's in Christ Jesus has already been accomplished for me. The problem is we're trying to make it happen. And the problem is with some of us, we step outside of the will of God and we want to go get things done ourselves and we fall on our face. Hello? Am I the only one? I've done it myself. Oh, I, I pray about something and when it don't happen, what do I do? I'll, I'll just take care of it myself. Bam! Fall right on my face. And what do, where do I end up? Right back in the presence of God. It didn't work out, so God, I guess I'll trust, I'll delight, I'll rest, and I'll commit my ways to you. And through that, I believe, God, that everything I'll ever need will be accomplished for me. So, let me ask you this question. Um, are you discouraged because no matter how hard you pray, uh, it seems like the door is always shut in your face? I know that experience. To those that feel that way, you need to take a moment. Just take a moment and listen. Take a moment and listen. Be still in the presence of God and allow God to put the pieces of your life back together. Many, many of us are even guilty of trying to connect the dots or trying to put the pieces back together, trying to make it work out. Don't do it, folks. Just rest in what God has done for you, and I promise you, everything will work out on your behalf.